Rise of Bandy for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm delighted to have with me on Zoom today, my man, heavyweight contender, Mr. Fabio Worley. Fabio, we were doing this every like two or three weeks once upon a time. It's been, I think, at least <laughs> six to eight weeks since the last time I spoke to you. How are we doing? Yeah, man, I'm good. We were, we're doing this regularly. We're doing it all the time, but a bit of, a bit of time in between is never a bad thing. How you been, though? You think all right? Everything's well. Everything's well. I know, obviously, because of COVID, we were, we were, you were more accessible. Now that COVID mm. has uh, allowed us to go out and about, you just uh, left me in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Don't feel bad. You're not the only one. I've left everyone. I've just gone off on my own for a bit, had my own time, my own space and whatever else. But it's all good, mate. I'm back. I'm in the mix. Good, good. Uh, Fabio, um, just, let's just go back. Obviously, Fight Camp, uh, Nick Webb. Um, I'm going to be honest, I spoke to a few people and they said, you know, Nick's going to give Fabio some problems and, and they wouldn't have been surprised if, if Fabio got the nod. Um, what was your expectations going into that fight? Uh, I was expecting a very motivated and a very confident Nick Webb. Um, and that is what you saw from the opening stages of that fight as well. We were like, That's how I expected him to come out. I expected him to come out with a lot of a lot of energy, a lot of fire. I just wanted to really kind of get on me from the early because that's what worked for him so well when he was fighting Eric Pfeiffer is that he jumped on him and just didn't let Pfeiffer get in the game, didn't let him get on his get on his toes, didn't get him get moving, get into any sort of rhythm. He just jumped on him straight away and took control of that fight, kind of took it all away from Pfeiffer and, and then eventually wore him through and got him out of there. So I thought I felt that he would come through with that same kind of look to it he think, you know what, that's worked for me well, and I can do that. Him, I knew he'd come in, obviously being the bigger man and whatever. He thought, you know what, I'm the bigger guy here. If I can wear, if I can put my authority on the fight early on, I can kind of run away with it. And I sensed that as well in the early, that early minute or so of the fight is that that's where the kind of it was slowly slip, slipping that way of him kind of he was letting a lot of shots go and building up a lot of confidence and wanting to get stuck in. So I kind of had to put a stop to that. It, it seemed like your plan wasn't to kind of engage with him with bombs, but it seemed like you just, it was just a moment. I know it happens. You've got fans there, you're outdoors in Eddie's back garden, and it feels like you just thought, come on, let's have it. And it seemed like it wasn't part of the plan. Am I correct? Am I thinking right? Yeah, no, you're bang on, you're bang on. So my coach gave me a talking to after about, like, that was not, that was not the game plan we've had together for the past however many weeks or whatever, but Sometimes situations dictate that you just need to look, you need to kind of come up with plans on the fly and assess the assess the moment for what's in front of you. And that's just how I felt. It felt I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was in the right place for me to be bouncing and move. And my body just didn't feel like it wanted to respond in that way. So I had to adjust, had to swap. And I thought, and at the point, like I was saying, where he felt like he was building up some a head of steam here, I thought, hang on, I need to. I need to put a stop to this earlier on. I need to kind of back this up. But it wasn't necessarily a plan to get him out of there straight away. In my head, my plan was to, you know what, lay a few big ones on him, make him think about what he's doing a bit more. I'll just put a bit of pause in his work and then we can go from there and then we can move through the rounds, move through the pace and go like that. But some of those landed and there was a little brief second where those landed, I looked up and he was, I could see in his face, he wasn't, all there and he was he didn't fire back either so I thought all right cool let's go let's just let's just run with this and and see where it goes and go from there and eventually it ends up me getting him out. Stoppage came obviously uh, Nick went down um what did you what kind of did you make of the stoppage a lot of people thought afterwards that Nick didn't want any more he, he just didn't want to carry on fighting um did you feel like you, you you gave him damage or did you did you realize that you punished him enough for him to just not get back up? Yeah, I think you could tell that he that after once he got into the second corner, that was at the point where he was like, I'm not really about this anymore. Because there was after I'd loaded up and let a few off, there was even a second where I paused because the ref is right to my right, he's right to my side, and I think he's now about to step in. So I half paused and almost looked to him like, Are you are you stepping in now or am I still going? So then I lay like three or four more. And even in that, even in that period of time where I didn't, I wasn't doing anything, I was almost looking at the ref. Like Nick didn't react; he was kind of curled away in the corner. So it just, it's it's about body language as well. As much as people say like, "Oh yeah, it's premature stoppage" and blah blah blah, like you have to look at the fighter as well and see, well, does he look enthused? Does he look like he wants to keep going? Does he look like he's got more in him, kind of thing? And and just from the way Nick was acting at that time, it just didn't seem like he did. 
obviously 12 fights now in um you've obviously nick webb you obviously molina was previous and molina who's in, who's been in there with joshua with john wilder lartes as well um what's the next stage is it is it stepping up to that really next level i know i saw some tweets about nathan gorman potentially being next but what do you want next um yeah i just want i want another like i want another stepping stone in terms of a belt some silverware something different now like I, i've done the english i've i want it i've defended it cool take that one off i'm done with that now so whether the british commonwealth kind of region is next that, that, that's a funny one because it's not up to me it's not like i can say yeah i want that next because it, it depends on what joe joyce wants to do with his belts and i can't I can't tell him what to do with them either. I kind of need to just wait and see or pick and plan a different route, go elsewhere with it and do something different. So that's not a problem. Like I'm not completely heart set on that being the one direction I need to go down. Um, it's a good one and it's one I'd like to go, but if it's not there, then it's not there. There's other options out there. There's other good fights out there. Like 12 fights in is still not loads. It's not, there's still other just, I could still have a good testing fight, some good hard rounds. Like, the thing is, I've, I've still not gone more than six. Like, it's not ideal. I would like to, I would like to go more. I would like to have them more testing fights, put more rounds in, just, just tick a few more little boxes off. So if, while I'm waiting around, those are, those are some of the in-between fights I can have, that's fine. It's not a problem. Um, on the same night, your stable mate, Mr. Babich, the Savage, uh, did something unique that I've never seen before. He proposed to uh, his, his girlfriend, uh, any plans for you to do something similar in the future, Fabio? <laughs> You've lost your head, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, not anytime soon, mate. Not anytime soon. But that was that was such a great, it was such a great and special moment as well. And it was a, it's a fun, it's a weird one as well because he told me like as soon as basically as soon as I got into the bubble that week, so I was like absolutely buzzing for him um, to know it was going to happen and stuff. So, and then and then his um then his what his fiance came um. I think on, on the Friday or something, and I saw her and said hello to her. And it's like that weird thing, like, you know what's going to happen, but you can't, like, say anything. So, but yeah, man, no, I was buzzing for him. I was buzzing for him. So, Fab, in terms of, obviously, coming out, being back in the ring next, uh, I know Dylan's scheduled end of October at the O2. I know you said you're just kind of ticking along and, and resting and letting your body recover. I know you've been quite active over the last 12 months, but is that going to be too soon of a date for you? Do you want to end of the year, maybe? That's definitely too soon. Uh, October is definitely too soon for me. To be honest, I'm not really looking to get out again this year. Um, I've got some little things I really need to just like. I've got some little injuries that I need to just pay attention to, because I've I've spent the last year and a half, almost two years, just ignoring them, pushing them to the side, just getting through, getting through, just make it to the next fight, just make it to the next fight, kind of thing. And I've done that enough times now where like. Those little injuries are at the point where they're repairable, they're they're manageable on a kind of low level. Where if I keep going, they're going to get to a point where I'm going to need something as drastic as like surgery or or whatever else. So it's just about listening to my body, to be honest. And I've been I've been not ignorant, but I'm not the type to be like just run away at the first sign of a little injury. I want to keep going, but now I'm at a point where I just need to kind of take that into account, especially with the kind of year I'm planning on having next year. I'm going to have some big fights, some good fights. So my body needs to be in shape as well. I don't want to be going into those half broken. Uh, Fabi, did you watch the um, Triller event last weekend with David Hay, Evander Holyfield on, on the agenda? No, I didn't watch the event. I've seen the highlights and stuff. Um, I've seen the bits and bobs, but I didn't I didn't watch it. I didn't really, like, there was nothing on there really had any interest to me. What, what did you kind of make of, obviously, Evander Holy, Holyfield's an absolute legend in the sport of boxing, at both cruiserweight and heavyweight um, in his peak and prime, but... It was sad to see, wasn't it, himself, 58 years old mm. in the ring, and, and you can tell he clearly didn't have it. No, no, it just wasn't there. It's just, it's, it's hard, it's almost hard to watch, because you, like, you can see him want, like, you can see kind of the clockwork going through in his head of him wanting to react, but his body's just like, we're not, like, we're not there, we haven't got it. Like, it's not, it's not 10, 15, 20 years ago. I, I haven't got them same kind of moves in my tank like I used to have, like, they're just... They're just not there. And it's, it's hard to see, especially with someone like Holyfield, who so many people idolise. He's such a great kind of figure for the sport. Like, and, and just to see him go out like that, it's just not, it's not nice. It's not where you want to see them, is it? And David Hay, obviously, against Joe Forney, obviously, we, we both, we all know that they're best buddies. Uh, David went the full eight rounds. Uh, he looked great, actually. His jab looked good. He was fainting a lot. His legs looked great. Uh, but I thought that was it. And then he calls out Tyson Fury uh, on the mic afterwards. Um, 
and I wouldn't even be surprised if that fight even happens down the line now, the way boxing is going. But mm-hmm. what are your thoughts? It's all it's all well and good looking great against the 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 opponent he did, but to then pull them skills out against the Tyson Fury and whatever else is a different it's a different game entirely. And, and we saw him when he struggled past Bellew a few times, or not even got past him. He, he struggled with Bellew. So that's that like Fury's a complete different kettle of fish. So <clears throat> like Hay knows what he's doing. He's always been that that guy. He's always been good with the mic in front of him. He's always known what to what to talk about and how to kind of bring up some interest in something. But it's not something I'd I'd really be interested in seeing. I don't think many people are. So I mean, we've been deprived of big fights this year for different reasons, for cancellations and fights not happening and politics, etc. One fight that we hope will take place and it's going to take place, which is next weekend. Anti Joshua returns back to the ring against Alexandra Usyk. I know a couple of months ago, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I did see some pictures of yourself in Sheffield and sparring Anthony Joshua. Uh, yeah, it was um, It was just before the um, thingy fight. What's his name? Who did? I forgot his name. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so it wasn't... It was before that fight. Oh, okay, I was just making sure that I yeah, was... Yeah, yeah, it was a while ago. How was that work? I don't know, it wasn't... Sorry? How was that work with Joshua? Yeah, it was good. Really good. Really good. Um, it was really good. Really interesting to be there at the kind of at the Sheffield base where they train and stuff, the GB base. Speak to McCracken as well, see him and stuff. And just kind of, there was a lot of time spent kind of afterwards, after the session, and just kind of set up, sat observing, just seeing what he does, bits and bobs. Just trying to soak it in, really. Someone who operates at that higher level, just to see all the little bits and bobs they do. But yeah, it was a really good, really good sparring session. Could you see anything other than an anti-Joshua win next week? I could, yeah. Yeah, I, d- I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's an absolute foregone conclusion. I would edge more towards him, definitely. Um, because of... I, don't, I, I also don't think it's just completely just outright going to be AJ's. What, what do you think those challenges are to uh, Joshua? He's gonna, I think it's someone that he's not been in with before type of opponent that was is more than happy because he's been in with with heavyweights people who are their pace is a bit slower their punches are a bit slower just the whole just the whole a lot of the aspects of the fight is a, is a, just not much but a few notches slowed down whereas with someone like Usyk who is just boom 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 just at you and it's not like they're devastating punches they're not taking your face off cleanly but they are just they're consistent and they're just on you and on you and it's not so much even the physical aspect, it's your brain goes into overdrive almost. You're just having to pay attention so much, like little half steps here and there where he's shuffling you around the ring and little pokes and punches up and down, up and down, the way he moves and stuff. So it's it's a lot to kind of take into account and, and work with. Um, the th- with, with Usyk as well, some of his heavyweight performances haven't been great. Um, they've not been the same ilk of what we've seen him at when he was at cruiserweight, but... I think he'll definitely show up on, on the night. I think he knows the AJ fight is, is obviously the fight. So I think you'll see him on the night and he'll, he'll really show up. So they'll both have to come out on their on their best selves. There's a few pictures circling of Anthony Joshua where he looked like he'd lost a, a bit of muscle, a bit of mm. kind of weight as well, looked a bit more slimmer, maybe anticipating, you know, that he's going to have to move around a little bit more than usual. Is that what you got from that as well? Yeah, you're seeing a lot of pictures of him looking a lot slimmer. Um, and in contrast, as I've seen, pictures of Usyk where he looks a lot chunkier, a lot bigger as well. So it seems like they're going to meet in the middle somewhere. Um, but I think that's the smart, smart plan from Joshua because he has had those problems in the past of gassing out kind of in the midsection of the rounds where you've seen it and he's not been able to kind of work the same and and get those same shots off. And especially when you're in there with someone like Usyk who's able to maintain that pace at about his kind of comfortable 80, 85 percent all the way through, you're going to need to at least match that. So Trimming off a few pounds here and there, I don't think will do him any harm at all. How does the fight end? I think it's a point. I do think it's a point. I don't I don't think Usyk has the power to get rid of Joshua, nor do I think that Joshua will be able to pin down Usyk enough to get him out of there. So I think points. Um, so whoever man wins, and I would still edge it to AJ, but I, I think points to whoever is going to win it. Um, Fab, just a quick last one. Obviously, I know you were on Sky Sports. Uh, you decided to obviously 
follow the zone and eddie hearn obviously as your promotional company um mm -hmm. it's great to hear that sky sports are still in boxing obviously uh, working with boxer and working with also awesome and boxing as well kala sound and etc um they've obviously announced quite a, a number of fighters richard react or someone you know um chris eubank jr josh kelly announced this week harlem eubank and, and many others but it is great though isn't it because i know you, why i'm asking this question because you've come from a background where you were fighting on very small shows and not given opportunities mm -hmm. you know eddie was on sky sports and if you, almost if he wasn't a name or didn't bring anything to the table you don't get that opportunity in the most respectful way but it's great where you now have you know bt frank warren's doing stuff on uh on, on bt now on a friday night with the prospect show which i was at last week uh eddie mm -hmm. on the zone and and sky just giving opportunities to those up and coming fighters who have kind of more of an audience yeah, of course, it's never a bad thing. Never competition is never a bad thing. Not for, especially not for us as the fighters. The only person that's not ideal for is like Ed and Frank and those guys at the top. We want to obviously they want to control everything and they want to have hold of it, which is fair enough. But for us guys, us boxers, it's just more for us. It's more opportunities, more places to fight. It means more money in the pot as well because purse bids that means different people are going in for stuff and there's just more around going on so more exposure more coverage for the for the sport as a whole as well so and it would it'd be nasty it wouldn't be nice to see a, a, a big icon like sky sports fade out of boxing as well so it is it is good to see them still in the game still going and picking up some big names as well so they're, they're looking to do a lot which is good Fabi Hawley, ifl tv thank you very much no worries.